Hello, good afternoon. Our topic for today's discussion is about the article entitled Why the Future Does Not Need Us. So it is about the dangers posed by science and technology and the insights from William Nelson Joyce, also known as Bill Joyce, 2000 article. Okay, it was written in the year 2000. So it was telling us why the future does not need us in evaluating contemporary human experience in the midst of rapid developments in science and technology okay so this is basically about humans and robots it is about the development of artificial intelligence or ais that may make robots act or decide like humans okay this possibility needs reflection regarding ethical considerations concerning robots okay automation increasing sophistication of computers and robots may be threatening the usefulness of humans and threatening human employment diba because as we can see nowadays, robots can almost do everything that humans can, okay? And, of course, if you have robots, you don't have to pay human energy monthly or mm, basically, let's say, you don't have to employ employees to work for you and imagine if you are asking for um, a human being to work for you you have to comply with the benefits that you should give and provide that employee okay in order for you to employ that employee okay but if you utilize robots for your business or for your company you have lesser expenses to pay. Siyempre, hindi mo na siya babayaran ng benefits niya. Hindi gaya if you employ human beings for energy consumption or for any work at your company, you have to give him feel help. You have to give him 13 months pay. And siyempre, yung monthly salary niya, you have to provide those. If you have robots, let's say, electricity lang ang kailangan mo i-provide, di ba? And it is very much convenient for you kasi robot yun, hindi yun napapagod. Unlike human beings, they have to have their break times and lunch breaks, di ba? Okay? If you are going to employ robots, less nga naman yung cost nun. Less yung um, i-spend mo money for you to employ that or to have that robot work for you, diba? So, it is very threatening to human beings. Siyempre, if in the future, all of our workers composed of robots na, you don't need persons na. And, that makes us to have a lesser job opportunities, diba? Okay. So, what is a robot? Okay. A robot is an actuated mechanism programmable in two or more access with a degree of autonomy, moving within its environment to perform intended task. So when we say autonomy kasi, it is independence in one's acts or actions. Okay, so you can decide for your own. It's getting scarier nowadays that most of our robots nowadays they have their own autonomy okay they can decide what to do and they have their autonomy to decide whether to proceed in this procedure or that procedure okay if you can imagine that and so and a robot is also able to move within its environment so it has its own environment and it is able to perform intended task. So, parang napapalitan na tayong mga tao ng machineries, ba? This is what I was talking about kanina, autonomy. So, that means the ability to perform intended task 
based on current state and sensing without human intervention. So, that means it can work on its own without any human intervention. Walang tulong ng ibang tao. So, a robot can work on its environment without the help of a human being. Kakatakot, diba? So, as you can see in the picture, um, it is not uh, being controlled by human na. Okay? So, that's very much scary. And, the ethical dilemma of robots. So, according to Dylan Evans, the ethical dilemma of robots includes some countries are drawing ethical codes and legislation regarding human abuse to robots and vice versa. The development of emotional robotics, which allows robots to recognize human expressions of emotion and to engage in behavior that humans readily perceive as emotional, also contributes to the ethical dilemma regarding robots and humans. So, as you can see, some robots are now even claiming to be abused or they are being abused na. And what's scarier is, some robots are able to express expressions. So, as you can see, robots now, a days, are becoming very much like humans na they are able to express human emotions so what is the purpose for giving robots emotions diba and that is threatening our existence talaga kasi we are human beings and we still exist why is the need to create a robot with human expression diba so, some of the ethical questions that are relevant to this issue include What does it mean for humans to be replaced by machines? Siyempre, what does it mean? It means a lot, okay? Siyempre, ikaw, if you are elder na and you work for this company or factory, let's say, and you will be replaced by a robot and what, what, is, what are the chances that you lose your job, diba? And number two is the value of a human inversely proportional to that of a machine exhibiting artificial intelligence. What do you think? Are we inversely proportional to that of a machine? Let's say, you kaya kong gawin, kaya na rin gawin ng machine, diba? So, we have to consider this one. And number three, how do we guard against mistakes committed by machines? Of course, machine lang yan. And it doesn't have brain pa din. Kahit nasabihin natin it has artificial intelligence or AI, artificial pa rin siya eh. And it doesn't have brain pa rin of its own. And of course, those robot works according to how it is programmed or it is limited to the things that are programmed to its system, diba? And number four, if a robot injures someone, is the designer to blame or the user or the robot itself? Of course, if that robot malfunctions, there are no laws that you can sue that certain robot. Robot lang yan. And if it malfunctions, do we have the right to sue the one who created the robot. I don't think so. Parang, eh, if that robot is being purchased na by this certain company, and th- that robot malfunctioned after such long time of using it, you can no longer sue the creator of that robot anymore. Kasi, that's the company's obligation na to maintain the robot. Because, they have been using it for a long time. And we can't say na okay siya ngayon and tomorrow it can malfunction, di ba? Of course. And number five, if robots can feel pain, should they be granted certain rights? This is the scarier part, okay? If the robots can feel pain. So, as we can see, the robots can have emotions. It can feel pain, eh. And it, what's funnier here is, can we give them rights? Diba? Parang, we are competing 
na with robots, we human beings, ba? Diba? Because tayo nga, hirap tayong ipaglaban yung rights natin, tapos we are giving some machines to have its own rights kasi robot siya that can feel pain, ba? Diba? What what are the odds that that can happen? Okay? So, number six, if the robots develop emotions, as some experts think they will, should they be allowed to marry humans? <laughs> this is happening now, di ba? Um, a perfect example of it is a guy that married a robot in Japan. Okay? So, as we can see, possible. Kasi, if a robot can exert emotion and um, a certain human being is being attached to it emotionally. Kasi imagine mo, kung we can attach ourselves to dogs, to cats, and it is not very much impossible for us to attach ourselves or emotionally attach ourselves to robotics that can show us affection, di ba? And emotion. Kasi... Uh, if we're going to perceive or to look at this certain robot, we are going to think na as if it was a human being. Kasi, if you can see, some robots have their facial features and some of them can talk or can have a conversation with you, di ba? And we can't deny the fact that some human beings or some men or some women, let's say, can fall in love with that certain robot. Diba? And can we or should we allow them to marry someone or marry a human being? That's very much like a joke, but it can happen. Okay? Number seven, should robots be allowed to own a property? This is even funnier. Do we ha- allow them to have their own property since they can work for their own and they can speak for their own, they can act for their own, do they have the right to own a property in the future? That's scary, right? Okay, so number eight, if we see machines as is, as increasingly human-like, will we come to see ourselves as more machine-like? What do you think? If we see machines as is cre- as increasingly human-like, mukha na siyang tao, from the facial features itself, to the emotion it exerts, and to the words that it can speak. It is increasingly human-like na. So, will we come to see ourselves as more machine-like? Siyempre, if we are going to look at them like human-like persons na, or machines, and they are very much like a person or a human being for us human beings that to compete with those machine diba syempre you have to exert more effort in order to prove yourself na mas worthy ka to that job more than that machine diba are you worthy for that job syempre compete ka so you are going to increase efforts or energies to exert energy to certain work and compete with that robot who can who can do anything diba so we are going to see ourselves na as more machine like kasi we are going to exert more effort just to compete with a machine diba so that's very ironically funny but that's possible. Imagine, that's possible. Okay. Humans, telev- television sets, mobile phones, and computers. So, almost every household contains television sets. Yes. Do we agree? Meron pa bang bahay dito na walang television sets? I don't think so. Okay. Mobile phones and computers. There are hundreds of millions of mobile phones subscription millions of active facebook accounts and several hours of mobile phone and computer interference lalo na ngayon na we are doing everything almost everything virtually right okay the philippines 
has currently one of the highest digital populations in the world and is the fastest growing application market in Southeast Asia. Do we agree? <laughs> Filipinos love to use phones. Lalo na nung pandemic, di ba? And that's the time or the era where TikTok has been booming. Facebook has been booming, di ba? Twitter, di ba? Twitter, oh, very much toxic sa Twitter and I already uninstalled that application. But most of people uses TikTok and um, Twitter as a platform to express themselves. Do we agree? Right, diba? So, these devices are used as platforms for advertisement, propaganda, and advocacies for communication, for information dissemination as a recreational activity and stress reliever, and as a way to bond with family members. Yes, those applications, Twitter, Instagram, um, TikTok, and Facebook has been a way to bond with family members. And of course, as a recreational activity, pati YouTube, okay, for entertainment purposes na rin, di ba? Though there are uses, some argue that there are ethical dilemmas that these advancements bring forth. This include, parents argue that they make children lazy and unhealthy. Unhealthy why? Kasi nakahiga na lang ang mga bata ngayon. Unlike noon, nung panahon namin, ang mga bata, di mo makita sa loob ng bahay yan. Ah, sa labas, naglalaro. Unlike now, you give a child tablet and the child can spend the whole day playing with the tablet. And when you use your gadgets, you remain stationary at a place. And you don't make huge movements. So, that makes children lazy and then healthy. Diba? So, as you can see, most of the toddlers ngayon, they are very much obese. Why? They are obese kasi they just sit there eating foods and then playing with gadgets. No more playing around the house or around the vicinity of the house outside. Okay? No more playing with kapit bahays and etc. Okay? No more running. Diba? And people become alienated from other people because they are fixated with these devices. Instead of connecting people, they tend to separate them. Do we agree? This is very sad, no? That technology should have been uh, bringing people closer. But if you can see, kung palabas kayo with your barkadas, and even in your sessions, in inuman sessions, you can see that everybody is using phone. Okay, when you go to a concert, kunyari, punta kayo sa concert ng Ben and Ben, nobody is enjoying the scene without phone na. Everybody is raising their phone, taking videos of what is happening, di ba? In, in best na you immerse yourself with the, with, with the concert or with the music or with what's on your front, on what's happening right now. No, you are with your phone, you are on your phone, you are using your phone. Diba? You are not enjoying the moment na. You are using your phone and that shouldn't be the case when you are enjoying the moment. Diba? But, that's the sad truth na. And you can't enjoy something without having your phone in your hand. Diba? And, of course, people who are unable to distinguish from what is right and wrong are exposed to things which are not suitable for them. Of course, if you are not able to choose or to distinguish right from wrong, and then you are exposed to committing mistakes, diba? Also, according to the article, is Google making us stupid? by Nicholas Carr, we become dependent on the internet that our intelligence is affected. Yes. And we cannot deny this. Okay? 
during your um, graded recitation, I was just there sitting and looking at your expressions. And I can see that most of you are using your gadgets before you answer the question. Okay? I told you naman na I will not fail you even if you give me a wrong answer. But you opt to use your gadgets just to give me an answer in your graded recitation. Not all of you, ah, but most of you. And you cannot deny your eyes, okay? That's why I ask you to turn on your camera so I can see your expressions. And if you are being honest and if you are being true to yourself, I can see that, eh? We can see that in your eyes, okay? And in your expressions, magikita ko kung nagsisearch kayo or nagbrowse ng anything on your phone. And yes, I can see that, okay? And... That's very sad, okay? Um, that's the only thing you can give yourself, being honest to yourself. Kasi hindi naman ako yung niloloko nyo if you are going to use your phone during our graded recitations. That's yourself, okay? And is Googling making you stupid? That's supposed to be a no. Kasi dapat Google is giving us information, but no. You are using Google to answer your exams or everything, and that's for your um, conviction, na, okay? And that's for your own good. Sana, if you use Google, you use it for studying, okay? Not for answering questions or whatever. You can use it for research and studies. You can use it, yeah? But always to answer your activities with your own words. Diba? And you can study with the help of Google, but don't let Google study for you. <laughs> diba? That's why it is said here that Google is making us stupid because we are being lazy na to study. We are letting Google to answer everything. Right? So, we begin to lose our way of concentration and contemplation and we began to lose interest in reading longish articles or books. Sino pang nagbabasa ng novel dito? If you have been reading novels or hardbound novels, and I am so proud of you, can keep up the good job. And because through reading, you learn eh. And you have this kind of pool of knowledge if you keep on reading. And... Okay? Instead, we rely on the speed and ease of the internet. Diba? Um, if you are a bookish person, you enjoy the touch of the book, the pages and every pages. And it is very much different if you read articles on the internet. You enjoy the books by its cover and its pages. It is very much visual and um, the sense of touch is even everything is working. But if in, in, you use internet, <laughs> it is just merely a, a platform wherein you type your queries or you type your questions and poof, it was there. It's unlike um, the old times. It's very much unlike the old times wherein you can um, scan the book and and we can say that most of it are um, hard-earned knowledge, diba? Right? Because you scan for it and you read for it. Unlike now, na, andyan na lang, search mo na lang, lalabas na, diba? Right? What's troubling is that you rely on the internet. But... You should always remember that not everything you see in the internet is correct. That's why there are fake news, diba? So, don't rely on the internet, okay? So, let's go back to the article, Why the Future Doesn't Need Us by William Nelson Joy. Written April 2000, Okay? And uh, in some articles, I can see that William Nelson Joy is also called Bill Joy. Okay, William Nelson Joy is an American computer scientist 
and chief scientist of Sun Microsystem. And he wrote an article for Wired Magazine entitled, Why the Future Doesn't Need Us. Joy warned against the rapid rise of new technologies. He explained that 21st century technologies, genetics, nanotechnology, and robotics, also known as GNR, are becoming very much powerful that they can potentially bring about new cases of accidents, threats, and abuses. He further warned that these dangers are even more pressing because they do not require large facilities or even rare materials. Knowledge alone will make them potentially harmful to humans. Okay? Do we agree? I agree with him. Okay? So he argued that robotic, genetic engineering, and nanotechnology pose much greater threats than technological developments that have come before. He cited that the ability of nanobots to self-replicate, which could quickly get out of control. He also voiced out about the rapid increase of computer power. He was also concerned that computers will eventually become more intelligent than humans. Thus, societies into dystopian visions such as robot rebellions. Okay, napapanood na natin to sa mga movies, right? That a certain robot will rebel against humans. Diba? So, hindi malabong magyari to in the future. As we can see that these um, scientists and technicians or engineers are creating robots that are very much acting like human na. Diba? And so, again, why the future doesn't need us? So, Joy's article tackles the unpleasant and uncomfortable possibilities that a senseless approach to scientific and technological advancements may bring us humans, diba? So, scientific and technological advancement cannot only give us um, comfortable life, but they can also bring us accidents, diba? Do we agree? Kasi anything that man-made has its pros and cons. Because it's ano eh, it's not naturally made. It's, it's not naturally produced. So, we can't avoid human errors. Diba? So, it is very much unavoidable to think of a future that will no longer need human race. Diba? It is not just um, unavoidable to think, but it is very scary to think that the universe does not need us. Diba? So, it makes thinking of the roles and obligation of every stakeholder a necessary component of scientific and technological advancement. In this case, it is very necessary that the scientific community, governments, and business engage in a discussion to de- determine the safeguards of humans against the potential dangers of science and technology. So, that concludes our discussion for today. For your assignment, on the band paper, list five instances in our history where science and technology became failure or a threat to human beings. So, I will give the rest of the time for you to research the answers for your assignments, okay? So, I hope you learned something for today and enjoy the rest of the day. Goodbye and see you again next meeting, okay?